the folks last night, that was a hell of a performance that President Joe Biden gave with the State of the Union. If you tuned in or if you walked into that chamber yesterday with the expectation that you were going to see a president in the throes of cognitive decline, you, you left severely disappointed because he was on point. He was extremely strong in his delivery, folks. I mean, just an amazing performance. And the thing that got me was the the response on the Republican side. And I got to show this to you. So this is a Republican congressman, folks, and he's going on in his response about $7.50 milk per gallon. I mean, these people are just, they're feckless. Listen to this. If you're paying $7.50 for a gallon Nobody of milk is. and 4 or $5 for a dozen eggs, you're saying to yourself, hold on a second, you're telling me inflation's going down? So you got you got him talking about $7.50 gallon of milk, which doesn't exist anywhere as far as I know. I just was at the store yesterday and I paid $2.20 for a half gallon. And then you've got Representative Steve Scalise who said this. People remember how good things were when Donald Trump was president. <laughs> Yeah, really? You know, I'm looking at my Apple Watch right now, which has got uh, an indication that the S&P 500 is at an all-time high at 51.83. You've got inflation in the 3% range. You've got unemployment in the 3% range. Yeah, things could be better, uh, namely the housing market. But Biden said some stuff about that that's going to help that if it can get passed. Um, these people are living in an alternative world they want to construct their own narrative, but yet their narrative doesn't match the facts of the moment. And it, it's it's just amazing to me that they continue. So the old time best response was after the Republican response after the State of the Union speech, folks. And you've got Senator Katie Britt who said this. Mr. President, enough is enough. Innocent Americans are dying and you only have yourself are you okay? I mean, it went on like this. It went on like that, folks. I mean, it was it was just that bad. And then the whole time this is going on, get this, Trump was on True Social trying to deliver a play-by-play -play on the State of the Union, and it kept crashing. True Social just kept crashing, kept coming down. And the best that Trump could do was making fun of Biden's hair or the way he looked. The whole time, the, the platform is just crashing, crumbling underneath them. I mean... Way to go, right? Way to go. Um, but one of my favorite responses that he had was when it came to Obamacare. This is what President Biden said about Obamacare and the repeated attempts by Republicans to kill it. Well, my predecessor and many in this chamber want to take this prescription drug away by repealing the Affordable Care Act. I'm not going to let that happen. We stopped you 50 times before and we'll stop you again. You better believe it. And I love that response. Did you see when they panned over to Lauren Boebert, who probably won't get elected next term, um, Matt Gates? they sat there like jiggle. They just squirmed and wiggled. You know, it kind of reminds me of, remember George Bush, Senior George Bush? He used to have this thing where he used to say, not going to do it. You're, you're just not going to do it. You're not going to repeal Obamacare, Republicans. Get used to it. And then, folks, the, the other things that he talked about, he re repeatedly referred to Donald Trump as my predecessor. I don't even think he said Trump's name, to be honest with you. And he said, you can't love your country only when you win. He admonished the Supreme Court for overturning Roe versus Wade. As I mentioned, he won't let them repeal Obamacare. He recapped his victories with the Infrastructure Act and said, you know, there's a lot of Republicans out there when the money starts coming in and funding projects locally, they're taking credit for it. That's okay. You can do that. The CHIPS Act he talked about, he called for a two-state solution in Palestine, creating a pier in Gaza for supplies to be able to flow in by ship. And he's calling for a bipartisan solution uh, on the border as well, folks. But, you know, one of the major problems that young people are having right now is is the ability to buy a home and it just shows that biden is in tone deaf on this he actually came up with a ten thousand dollar credit to those um, looking to buy their first home a ten thousand dollar credit over two years and also a ten thousand dollar credit to those selling starter homes so that 
the people that have got low interest rates and just don't want to get out of their home for that reason, this might help them crack and actually move to sell their home. And he's calling for $25,000 down payment assistance for first time home buyers whose parents don't uh, currently have homes who are not homeowners. He's to address the supply situation in homes, not having enough homes out there for people to buy. He's, he's calling for $20 billion competitive grants to help communities build housing. So folks, um, it's a president who's in charge, uh, who's not tone deaf to what people are going through right now. And, you know, let's focus, pivot right now for a second over to Trump. So what do you have going on? Despite the fact that he was on true social while it's crashing, you know, trying to talk smack about Trump or Biden. So this next week, you've got Victor Orban coming in to meet with Trump. Now, Victor Orban is one of those autocrat wannabes, decidedly anti-LGBT, uh, you know, just a, a heavy-handed, extremely conservative uh, leader who's who's coming over, you know, like like Trump is working in some sort of shadow government, you know, come on into Mar-a-Lago, you know, I'll, you know, have a state visit, you know, like he's, like he's working in some sort of shadow government. Anyway, you've got that going on. And then folks, I got to show this to you too. So the troubles that Trump is having right now. So check this out. So Donald Trump, he's got legal fees. Um, he's hit with more legal fees as a result of the failed steel dossier. Remember that PP lawsuit, as they call it? This is salon.com article that just came out. So while he was online yesterday or trying to be online with True Social, spacking, you know, Biden, actually there was a uh, court document that was released at the same time. A British judge ordered Trump to reimburse the cost of legal fees spent by Orbis Business Intelligence, a company founded by former British spy Christopher Steele for their defense against a failed lawsuit brought about by the former president over the now famous Steele dossier. So there's another $382,000 that Trump has to pay. And if that's not enough, Salon.com also had an article here where his lawyers are begging for mercy, suggesting Donald Trump is having difficulty coming up with the bond. And there she is, Alina Haba. And I kid you not, she's begging. She's saying that requiring President Trump to post a bond or other security before this court's ruling on a stay motion threatens to impose irreparable injury in the form of substantial cost, which he may or may not be recoverable from. Um, it's just, uh, just, and this is 83.3 million. With interest, it's 91 million that they're looking for him to come up with, and he can't do it. You know, this is man who's just told everybody that he's richer than hell. Mar-a-Lago is worth, what, he says $250 million, and he can't come up with the money. I mean, this is, on one hand, you can't claim to be the richest pre president or the richest man in the world and then say, I can't come up with $91 million. I mean, it, it doesn't match. There's something, there's something wrong with that. The man's got wealthy friends. He's got the ability to put assets into trusts. You know, because Judge Engeron, specifically with the civil fraud trial in New York, said he couldn't deal with banks. So he's got the option of putting things into irrevocable trust or some sort of trust to get loans. And that mainly means that somebody else would control those assets um, in a direct way as opposed to Trump controlling those assets. But he's got options. The man's got options. And, you know, begging for mercy here is just not going to work. And like I've said before, folks, I really think that we're going to see a bankruptcy come from Donald Trump, which just flies in the face of this, this rich man image. And the problem with his properties is that he's got his name on it, but evidently he's got mortgages up to the hilt. Everything's mortgaged. Everything's got a mortgage. So in closing in this segment, I got to send you this, uh, I got to show you this. Russia sends warning to U.S. ambassador ahead of elections. So Russia is concerned about anti-Russian programs and projects to recruit agents of influence and disinformation campaigns ahead of their election. I mean, that's a joke, folks. It's, it's as if Russia's saying our elections are free and fair, and we don't want you doing anything to influence the elections because they are so free and fair, when that's obviously a joke. I mean, the elections in Russia are are just a formality. 
right? It's predetermined that Putin is going to win. And no matter of no 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 matter of disinformation, no 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 flood of disinformation is going to change what Putin wants in this election, which is for him to be elected president. Again, it's a joke, but they're concerned about disinformation as if it's a free and fair election, folks. I kid you not. Well, I want to thank you for tuning in. We'll look for you next time. Till then.